Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our teacup scene, needle filtered teacup scene. And you could be making something as, um, as similar to this um, if you have just with uh, pinches of wool, it's a stash buster, so you don't need uh, very much at all. Um, and you do need a, a cup or, um, I don't know, I think this is a sugar bowl. And vintage sugar bowls. So whatever whatever you've got um, handy, it doesn't have to be a vintage cup, it could be um, a more modern cup like this one here. That's a more modern one and that's the one I'm gonna fill with, well, um, and arrange it really nicely. But before I do this, I'm going to say hello to um, some of the people who are here. And we've got a um, nice, nicely, the, the house is getting fuller. We've got Diane. Uh, we've got a first time viewer here, um, CJ, I don't really know what the name is, but there's a, there's a lot more letters, but I, I don't want to read them all out. Rachel is there. Hello, Alison. Vampire Venom. Hello. Awkward Prawn. Hello, Jane. Um, Carol is there. Hello. Um, Susan. Angela. Oh, Van der Meer. Michael. Hi, Michael. Um, Melanie. Gillian. Um, and um, others. There are lots of people who are watching um, quietly. They don't participate in the commentary, which is absolutely fine because, um, um, you know, that's fine. You can be silent in the background. However, if you are, then you will be missing out on our today's price. Uh, for this, you need to comment. And what we want you to tell us is what is your perfect cup of tea or coffee? What is your perfect cup of tea or coffee? And I think you're allowed to say maybe what goes with it because sometimes the cup of tea or coffee on its own isn't really gonna um, cut it. So if you um, if you need a biscuit or something else with it, do tell us about it. What is your perfect cup of tea or coffee? And uh, as always, you can win yourself a 15 pound gift voucher. We are giving two away. They, uh, the winners are going to be selected randomly. This is today live stream um, on the 29th of March at one o'clock on YouTube and it will be repeated on, oh my goodness, I actually don't know what um, time it will, when, when it, on Thursday this week on Facebook, whatever date that is. Um, oh, it must be the last day of the month because Friday is the 1st of April, so it must be the 31st of uh, March. We will be repeat, repeating this on Facebook and you've got another chance to win yourself a 15 pound voucher. So we're giving two away on each of those two events. And um, um, today is a stash buster. As I said, I've sort of um, raided my my stash and I've put together a little a little wool palette here that I'm going to be using. This is to decorate um, the um, the surface once I've made it. Um, this one is popping out here. I've also got some core wool that I will be using, but this is also a great opportunity to maybe use up some of these little felting mats that you might have plenty of, or even our um, structural core wool. We're selling this um, at the moment. It's discounted and um, I'm, we do have it in the workshop, but I don't know if it's been put back into stock. So if it's not in stock, then maybe Alicia can uh, give Sheena a nudge. And um, so this is, we're going to repl replace this with another uh, one that um, is less dusty when you cut it. I, I think it's less, in fact, you, you get it, we, we're getting it pre-cut, so we don't even have to um, suffer and wear masks when cut, cutting it. And um, I just want to show you it could be all kinds of different makes. So I've even bridged the two together. You could be making a whole village of, um, look, does this look familiar? This is something you got into your in your surprise box this month, which you can still get. It's storm in a teacup and uh, you actually do get a teacup in there. And I just wanted to show you this in particular because this is, um, Oh, this is how big a ball you um, you could would have to make sometimes to fit inside a teacup to then come up um, relatively high. This one similarly, I've I've left it as a ball. Um, I haven't glued it in. Um, it sits there perfectly fine. But with this one, I won't pull it out because I have actually glued it in in there firmly. So just giving you an idea, it takes quite a lot of core. So if you've got some scraps of wool that you want to get rid of, or as I said, the um, 
um, the, the core structural wool or maybe even the felting mats, then this is a good opportunity to, um, to get rid of it. Right, there's my um, teacup and there are my decorations and I'm going to start doing this now. Um, I've, I haven't actually planned this very much at all, so I'm going to go with whatever happens in the moment. But let's have a look at the overview camera. Please be in the right place. I haven't checked this one yes not bad right of course if you've got some pretty decorations inside your cup you lose them but you won't lose the ones on the outside now I think it always looks nice to maybe almost sort of try and correspond with what's going on outside on the cup so if you've got a, a flowery cup maybe do a, a fairy garden um, like I've done here um, with these beautiful um, it will come to me what they are and this is is actually um, it's actually, um, I don't know what make this is, but anyway, old royal china, no idea what that means. Um, and all the little bits have been uh, needle felted on top. So you will be making um, a landscape, but it's a 3D landscape, which also means that you've got lots of little items that you have to needle felt separately here. So um, let's start with doing the core. So you could just make a big round ball that you felt down and um, literally put in here and um, that is what that's a quick way of doing it especially if you have the lanolin rich core wool that fells down super fast but if you do want to uh, get rid of some of these uh, little mats you can sort of layer them up um, and put them in there you can um, cut some of this structural core and um, put it in there as well um, what might be a good idea is, is to actually almost sort of make a ball out of this and then and then use some of the core wool like this to wrap it up so you're using way less core wool and um, that's just an idea you can make a whole shape just from um, uh, the lanolin rich or any other core wool that you have got but if you've got bits that you want to get rid of like um, mats or maybe just a lot of um, waste wool that you've got sitting around don't really know what to do with it then this is a good way of, um, of, of using it up so I have definitely used less of the wool than I would have done otherwise um, because the, the wool would have had to be felted down quite a lot and so I'm now felting this down um, to firm it up now what you, I will say is with this kind of project, you will be using the whole uh, needle um, range that you've got. So I'm currently stabbing it with a coarse needle, but when it comes to the fine detail, um, you can go down as, as small as a 40, if not a, um, a 42 fine needle. Um, so it is a bit of a uh, using up everything and using everything that you've got in your um, repertoire. Um, if you're completely stuck for wool, you've got nothing to use and you really want to make this teacup scene, then I would highly recommend to get the Enchanted um, um, Forest um, Wool Mix because that one has got um, a lot of really nice sort of colours in there, some colourful colours as well as um, the basic colours such as the browns and the greens and um, some curls, You've got the fairy mix in there and all of those I am um, definitely going to use. So there's my uh, ball shape, let's see if it fits, still got a lot of gaps around this so you need to build up those, uh, you need to fill those gaps basically and I'm just going to wrap the wool around to make it a little bit fatter. So the preparing of the cup can actually take quite some time, especially if you're starting from scratch by having to needle felt a ball shape. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that it's the width that gets built up here, this part here, so that I've got a nice, a nice snug fit. And of course I can use my felting mat to rest this on as well. So I'm just making a little lip here because I don't want to use any more um, wool. So obviously yours will be completely different to mine unless you've got an identical cup, which would be um, an amazing coincidence. But um, I would say that you can easily use <clears throat> up to 50 grams of core wool up in a, in a large-ish teacup. So it's definitely worth having um, something that um, sort of something spare, if you like. So once this fits in the cup, 
if you want this to be in there forever, then I would definitely glue it in. So put glue in the bottom here and glue it in. But um, if you um, before you do this, I think it's easiest to have it outside the cup to decorate it in um, in green. Now you can make this a whole ball. It doesn't have to have that lip, but it will just rise further out of the cup. And um, to to decorate it with a green, let's bring my greens in here that I've got um, I've taken out of my stash. So I have got here the neon green, the pale green. Sorry, um, Alicia, you're going to be typing fast here. Lichen green. I've got the rainbow drops um, green here. We've also got that as a plain pea green. Um, and then the green shimmer, which is again the same similar color, but has got little sparkly fibers running through it. Our forest green, our green variegated, and our new dark green variegated, and then some um, green Lester curls. And what I think works really nicely is to mix wools together so that you've got a nice um, um, variegated base. You can make you can make this as light or as dark as you want. You can also mix the colors and see what happens when you mix them. So I've just randomly mixed the wool together and I'm going to lay this over the top of my shape. Uh, this can be really rough and ready. You don't need to plan this very much at all. Just get it down. Imagine this is a very um, wild um, meadow that hasn't that has it's not a moon lawn it's got all kinds of things going on there you could even have a bit of brown peeking through just get it down and I'm using my coarse needle now you can use the clover needle felting tool which has got four needles sorry five needles five fine needles and that does help stabbing it down especially coloring in the surface if you need to speed your work up because you've made the shape way too big and you need to, to speed it up, then you can also use the prim tool, which is a bit of a, a more dangerous tool, so be careful when you're using this. It has got, in fact, two for six needles in there, um, and you can felt it down, but at the same time, it will firm up the shape quite a lot. Whereas with the clover tool, you, you fasten the surface on, and you're not really shaping, um, sorry, you're not really, um, making the shape smaller. With this one, you can really speed your work up by, um, by reducing the, the surface. Um, this one also has got an advantage that it has got a single needle that pops out. So you could just use that as a single needle if you feel um, happier holding this in your hand. And um, that's basically the, um, um, the prim handle. It doesn't come with needles. You have to load it up with needles yourself. And I have put six um, medium needles in there to make it really safe and secure. You click the thing back on, and um, and it, um, it it doesn't come off. So you've got it. You've got it safe if you put it in a bag. The advantage is that it fits in the palm of your hand, so you can actually work more from um, your hand rather than your fingers. Um, like many uh, um, other of the tools. That's just a little bit of a diversion talking about tools. So this looks quite like a nice sort of woodland um, ground. Um, add a bit of dark in there for all for, um, um, for a bit of an um, extra texture. Even a little bit of this bright green. Let's just let's just make this a nice uh, spring-like um, fauna in the in the forest. And now I've lost my coarse needle. Did I put it down somewhere? Talking about losing needles, um, these little um, scenes are perfect as a needle holder. So maybe I should just have all the needles that I'm using perched in there. And then I don't have to worry um, about finding them. So I'm putting all my twisted needles in there. I've got my 42 twisted fine needle. I've got my um, orange um, medium needle. I've got a, a medium um, twisted needle, my coarse twisted needle and um, a fine um, twisted. Um, I've got a green fine needle there. Let's put them all in there. Um, it looks really quite pretty having them in that um, little pin cushion, which is basically what this become what this becomes. Um, right, so let's get let's work with um, that's not a coarse needle. Let's use this one. No, that's definitely not a coarse needle. I can't find my coarse needle. Wherever I've put it, Maybe that one. 
no, that's not it either. I can tell your coarse needles. Ah, that's better. We now have the basic uh, needles um, on offer. I really do like to use them just as a rough and ready start for um, making these shapes or starting out, especially when you've got to do a lot of stabbing. They're quite grippy. And um, if, if for whatever reason, whilst you're frantically stabbing away, you break a needle, it's not the end of the world because um, they're a little bit cheaper than the others. So you're not, um, you don't feel like you've just used up your most precious needle. And I am making this really random here um, as I stab along. You can, of course, speed your work up, um, not just with these big multi-tools, but you can also use your three needle felting tool, which um, does help quite a bit as well. It's probably good to check in now and then whether it still fits your cup. Yeah, that's looking good. And I'm, I'm actually, um, I don't know if you can see it, I'm having a bit of a slope here and a bit of a steeper drop at that side. And um, I'm adding the surface first before I secure it in the cup, if you're wondering why I haven't done this yet. And get the wool down, mix it um, to your liking if you want or don't. I'm not felting this down too smooth at the moment because there's going to be a lot of um, surface cover going on. Um, in a minute so I'm just going to put it down quite randomly but you can it this is why I, I think it's such a great stash buster because it really doesn't matter if you've only got a bit of this green or a bit of that green because you can um, just put it down there any old way and see what happens you do however need to make sure that you are going um, far enough down towards the base of your um, shape because otherwise you've got a bit of white poking out so always check it um, against your cup and I'm going to put a bit more here on the back now there. cover that in start with my coarse needle again and felt it down okay so once I've felted this down, I'm going to um, secure this into my mug. And um, the, the great thing is, and this is a tip I'm giving you now, is that when once you are gluing it into your cup, you, you should sort of really just let it um, dry the glue. Um, so in the meantime, we can start making the individual things that need to go onto your seam. So I will just fasten this down. And then I'm going to glue it in to my cup. That looks good. Nice fit. Ready for the next stage. So to glue it in, you can use our um, glue stick, which um, I know I've got here somewhere. Or maybe not. Anyway, imagine you put the glue. You imagine you put glue inside here. It could be any kind of glue. It doesn't matter if it dries uh, clear or not. I think I might have left it at the other desk. I'm always going between two desks. Ah, here we go. Glue stick. Um, so just squirt a generous portion into there. So could be any kind of glue. If you've got a glue gun, use that. If you want to use um. Um, super glue, you can use that too. Just don't glue anything um, onto yourself with that. And just give it a generous squirt of glue all around. This um, this glue that I'm using is our glue stick. I really love these. Um, they are actually a PVA glue, but they are re really good quality PVA glue. They seem to be gluing wool really, really well. So I've just squirted some glue glue into the base here. Now I'm going to put that in, position it, and to um, to make sure that it glues in nice, I'm just going to turn it upside down. I'm just going to let that sit here like that, and um, and then we're going to continue. Right, so my cup's upside down here, just letting the pressure or the weight of the cup um, fasten the um, the two parts together, and um, and there's the other. Um, there's my needle cushion, so to speak. 
that I've now uh, put all the needles in there that I think I might have to use afterwards. And um, let's have a quick look what people are saying about um, what their favorite cup of tea or coffee is. Not everybody's a coffee um, or tea drinker, so I wonder what uh, creative answers people are coming up with. Right, so we've, um, we've got quite a lot of people watching here today as well. So for all of those who have, I haven't mentioned by name, welcome. And um, let's see. So I love an espresso with whipped cream. Oh, I love whipped cream. I am, I unfortunately, I'm dairy intolerant, but I do love um, whipped cream. Um, so we've got quite a lot, lot, lot of new names. I'm just going to mention them. So we've got Trixie um, from Hampshire. Um, we have got um, Ruth, I think, is new today. Um, oh, Elaine says, my perfect mug of tea is after a very long walk and then sitting in the garden with a nice biscuit to dunk in the tea. I love dunking biscuits in the tea. Um, Jane says, cappuccino in China cup with a side order of shortbread and a felting video. Now, there is an interesting thing. I am really fussy when it comes to what kind of cup I want to use. I swear um, tea drink um, tastes better out of a thin cup. And the shape of the cup has to be a certain way as well. I'm, I, I'm telling you, it's it's hilarious. I actually quite like drinking tea out of a glass cup. Um, yes, I, I'm definitely one of those weird ones. Um, so Erica loves her cafe au lait. Um, Oh, Deborah is new from um, New York, USA. Well, I don't know if she's new, but I don't I don't think I've seen your name before. Um, Trixie says, love just plain coffee, no milk, no sugar, but sometimes iced in the summer. I love iced coffee. Oh yeah, but then not not black. Um I, it has to be, it has to have milk in. Um Sylvia says, hello, Steffi, thank you for my gift voucher last week. Oh, you were one of the lucky winners. My favorite coffee is um, a black Tassimo Americano. Um, Sandra says, my perfect cup of tea is a cup of Yorkshire tea. Um, I actually, I am sorry, sorry, you're going to find out all my fussiness about tea. I actually really much prefer loose tea to, um, and I don't, I'm not a necessarily an instant coffee drinker. However, I do occasionally drink an instant coffee. Uh, Jane says, how weird, I just started making a storm in a teacup and have a little landscape like yours too. Nice. Um, Tina says, Earl Grey, preferably the stuff with rosebuds in from a shop in Winchester. Mm, very nice. But an Earl Grey with, will do, um, but any Earl Grey will do, with a bar of dark, dark chocolate for full me time value. Sounds nice. Carol says, um, or lemon tea with honey to sweeten. Ooh, I might, oh, I might, oh. Choca mocha with mini marshmallows or lemon tea with honey to sweeten. Um, Kat is here, also from um, USA. Now, PA, is that, what is that? PA, I, I'm so not familiar with um, the abbreviations. PA, um, is it um, Panama? No, that's not, that's not in the USA. Oh, I'm, oh my God, I'm, so, I'm going to embarrass myself so terribly now. I'm just going to shut up. Susan says, my favorite cup of tea is, is is it the Tuesday morning one green tea whilst watching this live stream and eating something yummy? And Susan, you're definitely, I think, from the US, so for you it will be morning. Jane says hollyhocks. Alison says freshly ground black coffee. First coffee of the day is the best. I agree with that too. Elaine, lupins. That's the flowers. Thank you. I couldn't think. Lupins on this on this mug. I knew one of you would um uh, save me. What a beautiful cottage um flower cottage garden flower okay i'm going to go and continue with this uh, teacup scene now or we're never going to get um um done with it um so let's just have a look what happens next so these these little contraptions the trees the toadstool um even the little sheep they're all needle felted separately and i'm going to show you now quick ways of of making a bit of a um manufacture manufacturing line for trees for this, you, you need some, um, this is out of my stash, so it looks very crumpled up. When you buy this wool fresh from uh, fresh from us, new from us, it doesn't look like that. But I'm going to give you a, tri a tip now. You need to make quick tree trunks. Um, this is Portuguese Merino. 
Um, for the tree trunks, you could use a longer fiber wool, but these anything short fiber works really well for making these um, small decorations on a teacup scene, even felting the surface. And uh, to make the uh, tree trunks, I use my felting needle and I'm actually going to wrap it around the felting needle really tight, the wool, flat like a ribbon. And um, if you hold on to the beginning, it won't slip. And then I'm going to turn it around and twist the needle around the wool whilst I'm um, pulling it out. Wrap thin layers, nice and tight, and they don't need to be awfully long. Um, but you will need the tree trunk. It's not just the tree trunk because you're actually wrapping green wool around the top or fastening the green wool onto the top, depending on what tree you're making for the for the um, for the green stuff on the tree. So I've got I've got my needle so half covered, and you slip it off, and you've got an instant. Um, um, tree trunk here you will then have to use a, a fine needle to um, just secure it a little bit more and um, I'll show you all of this again because I'm going to make a little manufacturing line here of tree trunks so another um, bit of wool so the way that I started is I started by wrapping it holding onto the wispy fiber so it doesn't slip until it's got a good grip then you can take turn the whole thing around and twist the thing whilst um, the wool is running through your other hand close to it keep keep teasing the fi fibers apart so that you have a nice thin wispy layer it's better to have lots of layers and go all the way around until the wool is um, used up slip it off your needle and then stab it so a shorter fiber is a little bit more um, difficult to wrap, but it is more rewarding once it's wrapped because you can quite easily stab the fibers in, in on themselves. So now I've got, I've made two, I'll show you a third time. There we go. So you've got your needle and I'm using my coarse needle. Wrap, start the wool by establishing it, turn it round, twist the needle to make more and tease the wool out so that you have got um, nice thin layers go all the way around until you the last wispy ends sort of um, feed into the into the shape take the needle out give it a few stabs just to secure and I notice I'm not stabbing the f um, either ends I'm literally just stabbing along it and there's actually a little bit of um, dried up grass in there, which I'm going to leave in there. Right, I've made three. That um, should be good. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have to um, wrap wool around the the, um, the tree now for, say, for, for pine trees. I've got my two darkest greens here, which is the dark, ver dark green variegated and the forest green. I'm going to mix them. And now you're going to um, literally wrap one end, choose whichever one to make a cone shape wrap. So you need more down the base and less along the top. And unless you're making um, a different shape tree, but uh, there's another way of doing a different shape tree as well. You can sculpt a lot by um, using your needle in a minute. So this is roughly cone shape, but like I said, and I'm using my fine needle for this, um, because um, I've wrapped it quite tightly. So I'm just making that end a little bit more cone shape. So it's a bit more pointy. And then the other end, this is where you have to watch your fingers. If you're ever you're stabbing towards your fingers, and I'm changing to my coarse needle actually, might be able to do it. No, it's, it has to lie on its side, unfortunately. So make sure that you've got a nice, neat um, edge here. So imagine it's like a canopy of tree when you're standing underneath it. You need, you almost sort of need to have, um, it needs to be like a triangle, like a um, 3D triangle, whatever the word for that is. Is it a cylinder? I think so. Right. There you go. So you've got one tree made ready. Now um, I'll show you another way of making a tree. If you want to make like a, um, um, I don't know, like a fruit tree or anything that has got sort of, exciting little bits in it. The cotton spots is great but if you don't have that then just take a wisp of any color you fancy. Could um, It could even be a mix of colors. Make some some colorful um, colors. Put them in there and you could even use a tiny bit of brown. Sometimes you can see 
the um, branches through a tree so it doesn't all have to be completely green you can mix it all up the main thing is that the majority of your um, mix is still green and notice that I am actually not just mixing this how I normally mix it with the fibers aligned I'm crisscrossing it because I want it to be like like a big fluffy ball like that really and now I'm going to um, put my tree trunk and lay it onto here give it a few stabs just so that it stabs into the other side of the green wool and then I'm gonna lay that over the top and now I'm going to um, reduce this tree um, cover the, the whole sort of leaf leaf cover here um, according to how I want it to be shaped so if you want it to be like a fluffy ball then you just stab into it all around making sure that the tree trunk comes out at the center and I'm just stabbing it down a little bit not too much I do want it to be nice and fluffy because um, I want it to look like a very um, leafy loose tree and that's another way of how you can make a tree and um, I suppose you could make another I've not done this before on my landscapes but you could make even another way making a, um, a tree more like um I don't know like the shape of a birch tree maybe so let's take some of these really light fibers and mix them up where you wrap it still like you did but this time you're actually wrapping it um, so that it is um, more like a, like a, what's the word, um, like a sausage shape on top, if that makes sense. And add some more there, some more green again. So it's more like, um, um, yeah, a different shape tree. You can make any shape tree you want. Just wrap it and keep it um, less um, triangle at the top but make sure that the stem is still poking out where it needs to poke out you can also make little shrubs that way and there are other ways of making shrubs as well and then the next thing we need to do is we need to fasten the trees onto the seam onto the teacup seam there it's just a little a little tree here we go so di three different trees here um, and um, to fasten it on my teacup seam comes out and so what I'm doing now is and uh, you need to kind of know where you're putting what um, I feel like what I want to do is have the trees here at the back so my scene is slightly slopier here and steeper there so I'm going to put the trees at the back and I'm going to put a cottage here at the front which is going to be a toadstool cottage so the trees will be fastened on like this at the back and um, and the cottage sits on top of the hill and then I can put other details around the base so I will need to now fasten on the trees for this you need to really stab hard into the base of that tree trunk now at the moment I'm literally just stabbing it on so that it's fastened in this is why you need coarse needles because you really need to go hard into anything that you're fastening on now um, so at the moment it's sort of leaning against the hill but then you can um, stab from the other end as well so that you are in a way you're stabbing the tree trunk in slowly but surely and um, always going um, back and forth around it to put um, something here so that it looks more like it's been fastened on you can use little little curls these blue faced Lester curls are perfect for that and um, use your scissors to separate them and then you could put almost like a little a little bit of these curly curly um, um, well it's almost like roots put them around the tree so the tree doesn't look just fastened on there that's one tree on and that's the tree sort of behind that slope that I've created and now I'm going to do the same here with a with a different the other style tree felt it on flat if you're doing this on a on a flat surface so if you want to fasten a tree on and you've got a flat surface then you can do that too um, exactly the same way flatten it out first and then um, go in from the other side I'm not sure you that with the third tree 
just to give you an idea. So I'm going to maybe just put two trees at the background here. Some curls around the base. Or any other. doesn't have to be curls. If you haven't got curls, just put something else around the base. Just so that the um, tree doesn't look like it's just, just been fastened onto the side of the hill. And so if you if you want to fasten a tree on and it's literally on top of a um, on a flat surface, say you want it here, you do the same thing. You felt it on like it's been blown over by the storm first. Felt it on really hard so the, the wool gets a really hard, hard, and hard and fastened into it. So at the moment it's lying flat and then you stand it up and then you're stabbing in from the other side and that will make it stand up but at the same time you are so that's now made it stand up it's really hard to show you this on an overhead camera with a because you're seeing everything from overhead but the idea is that you stab around the tree trunk all the way around it until your tree has got so much stability that it's actually standing up and then you can also use um, some curls or other wool to go around the base and always loosen the curls up because they fasten on better if you do that so add the detail on afterwards could even have a little curl sort of spilling out like a root that's coming out of the out of the tree right so that's now um, my little my little tree collection fastened on and um, the um, I can I could pull it out if I really wanted to but the glue is definitely starting to get secure in there so I'm going to go just go to the other camera so you can see what I've done there you go little uh, selection of trees you could you can put as many trees as you want um, on there um, obviously um, that's what I've done just three different types of trees which I've shown you how to do one nice little fluffy um, maybe a fruit tree or whatever and um, there's a pine tree and then another version of a tree right let's have a look um, how people are getting on with um, their um, favorite cups and I will I'm so sorry if I don't read in order or if I don't read out everybody's I'm I'm, um, I'm terrible trying to keep oh my goodness what's that I sorry that's just drawn my drawn my attention Judith says I love Darjeeling the champagne of teas with a chocolate brownie heaven. I do love Darjeeling too. I like Assam tea as well. Um, Ashley says hot sweet tea if poorly. Normal coffee first, but proper coffee not great with instant. Say Michael, um, sorry not Michael, but Michelle says I have been looking forward to this. Thank you. I like a good strong sweet builder's tea, cup of tea. Oh, so who would have thought tea and coffee can be so different? Um, so Alicia is asking who is coming to the retreat with me and um, the retreat if you don't know what we're talking about is this we have got spaces available in the tent and I believe in the house for um, shared or single um, sh single use and we are um, going to meet on Friday afternoon with a cup of tea talking of which and um, and getting to know each other it's it is a fun filled weekend where you will be meeting new people uh, re-meeting friends you will get um, home-cooked food you will be well looked after if anything people will say there's so much food um, and um, you will have lots of stabbing fun with um, with making a large um, posable gnome figure it's going to be a figure I will make up a sample and then show it to you so that you have m more of I, I I know exactly what it's going to look like it's in my head but um, I need to put it down but in any case come and um, and join us you can give us a call on 01453 839 454 or email us info at themakers.co.uk and find out more and what the availability is if you want to come and join us and uh, Alicia and I will be there we'll be hosting this together and um, we did the winter retreat together and that was an amazing event absolutely loved it and um, I'm sure that the people who came thought that too right so now I'm going to oh I found my coarse needle it was just lying there okay put it in there um, so I'm now going to put um, a toadstool house into the um, into my scene for this I'm going to go overhead again 
So very similar to how you made your um, trees, you now have to make a, a toadstool house. So you could, um, if you wanted to, you could use a little bit of core wool. I'm actually using, let's use a bit of core wool just for the fun of it. Um, so I've got I've got a bit of core wool here and I'm just make, rolling this up. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I have no idea what core wool it is, but it's one of our core wools, whether that is a Shetland, Gotland white, it might even be um, the core stuffing. Um, it might be the natural uh, New Zealand Australian, I don't know. But I've rolled up a little shape and it's into a sausage shape and I'm felting this down now. So felting this down and now I need to build up a little bit more bulk. And I have actually got a little bit of Cape Merino here because it makes the, a really lovely sort of cover over that as well. It's a very short fibre, but it works so well for um, making a toadstool house. So I'm going to wrap this around it but quite tight and the idea is that you um, you're going to get um, not an exactly um, sausage shape um, so I'm I'm keeping both ends wispy again because there's going to be things um, happening at those two ends I'm just felting the middle down relatively firmly Uh, there are other ways of doing these, by the way. Um, I haven't got the exclusive answer to how to make a tiny little toadstool. You might have very different ideas and um, they might even be better. You use whatever, do whatever works for you. I'm just felting this down. So I've got a, um, this part here in the middle looks um, nice and neat. And then I'm going to make the toadstool cup next so I'm making that separately from a bit of red um, and I'm going to lay the wool on top of each other so I've got a nice little thick patch there like that and I'm going to felt that into a round cup now going around the outside first felting this down so I'm making a circle onto the flat piece of wool and now I'm going to fold the bits of wool that are outside that circle in inward like that. And when you felt something flat on your mat, you have to lift it off. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the hay fever season has started. Um, unfortunately um, for me, I live in the forest, um, in the forest of Dean. And everybody probably knows, if you know the Forest of Dean, it has got a lot of beech trees. And apparently I'm allergic to beech trees pollen. So, yeah, not so good. Anyway, I've made a, um, a little flat piece here now. And um, I haven't been stabbing this very deep, just so that I have felt the red into each other. But you do need to lift it off your mat, especially if you're going a little bit deeper. I'm just neatening this up. So I felted it from both sides. I've got a nice fat little disc here. And what I'm going to do next, and there are many, many other ways how you can do this. I'm actually going to felt a little bit harder now because I want to bring the little cup up. So I'm, I'm, make, I'm felting around about half to a centimeter away from the edges. So that I'm now what I'm doing is I'm making a more of a curved shape. Can you see that? And um, that's one way of doing it. Bringing the sides up, felting into them. Mind your fingers as you're doing this. And then you can put this on top of your toadstool. And uh, because what you want to do now is you want to even extend, ex make this even um, more of a round shape you felt this on from the top down so you're stabbing the red fibers into the white which is fine because nobody will be any the wiser that, that you've done this so it's the right way around and you can neaten up the edges as well if you want so you've got a little overlapping um, bit of um, red toadstool roof on here now your way around it. If you want to have this um, uh, more bulbous then you can lay more wool on top so if you want it to be slightly taller you might even want to have a pointy roof um, then you have to lay much more wool over the top so you can felt this on 
afterwards and make that um, toadstool house a lot more tall in that way. It just takes a little bit of work getting that established. Tilt it down around the edges first. That's what you do when you add sort of a wad of wool to um, build up bulk and then felt it down going into the shape itself at the top. And in the process you can sculpt it. So if you want it to be a little bit more pointy, then you can sculpt this now as you're felting it flat. And I'm I'm working with my coarse needle still. So if you don't want a flat um, toadstool roof, but you want it to be a little bit more pointy, then you can do this as you are sculpting this now. And um, there's there, there are um, you can have different order in you can make that parts in different orders. I think with one of my houses, I actually made the the windows first, and then put the roof on. Um, so that's entirely up to you. And of course, we need to put white spots on there as well. So now I've made it actually more of a of a um, pointy shape, but um, on this one, it's a flat roof. So it's entirely up to you how you want to make this. And then all I've done for the for the window and for the door, I've used my um, Portuguese merino, which is dark brown, and I've just felt it. You can make square windows or you can make round windows. And for this, you might be better off using your fine needle and just put a little round or square window or maybe even a semi semicircle round window on there. A lot of um, when you come to the fine detail, you can get quite carried away with the fine detail. Just to warn you, tiny wisp, make a second window or just keep one, whichever way you want to do this. So you're shaping the window as you're felting um, the wool down. There, two windows look like little eyes. And then the door here at the front. Now, because everything's wispy down here, um, the door can be sort of later um, um, be part of just reaching the ground. So at the moment, I'm just felting it on. And even if it looks a little bit odd, um, it doesn't matter. So I'm felting this down. Now you can add more detail into your toadstool house by um, giving it window panes, which I have done here. I don't know if you can see this there. Um, you, you use wispy, tiny, tiny wispy uh, wools and um, felt that down. I'm not going to do that now because I do want to attach this uh, toadstool house now onto my the top of my hill. So I'm going to lay it on here like that at the moment. And I'm just going to stop with my coarse needle again. So I'm back with my coarse needle. Um, stop the wispy wool right into um, the, um, the shape. And um, so there is a lot of sort of stubbing, really quite heavy stubbing going on when you, when you fasten things on. Um, and do this at the back here as well. I'm trying to hold it so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going into the back here as well. Remember the toadstools, they have sort of quite a, um, a shape, shapely stem, so they're actually more narrow as they go into the ground. So you can uh, felt it down um, so that it looks a little bit pinched at the base. That is okay. And, and then um, you could Put a little bit of another color around the whole of the uh, the whole of the toadstool if you wanted to. Now I haven't added the white yet, but you can do that before or after. I'm going to use a little bit of the um, mountain sheep beige, and I'm just going to put um, almost sort of like a little bit of a base around it, so that it looks like it's in soil rather than um, in grass. But that you don't need to do that. It's just it's just a, another little bit of detail. And then to add the white spots, just take wisps of the white, oops, put it randomly onto the house and then just stab into it with your fine needle. So I'm, I'm literally going from my coarse to my fine needle, I don't seem to use the medium needle at all, and stab um, little white patches or spots onto there. 
don't stab very hard stab into the surface only so that you're not reducing the size of that house however you might find yourself stabbing around the white spots again and then keep going around with more of these there we go um how's everybody fared in the in the western hemisphere i don't actually know where where people have changed the clocks do they cl change clocks in the us um not entirely sure but we've had the clock changes and i'm finding it really hard at the moment to get up in the dark again i absolutely love um the 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 lighter mornings and i know it will happen quickly and i love the lighter evenings as well but i prefer lighter mornings because i'm an early riser so i get up at half five sometimes even earlier and if um if the um if it's dark i'm finding it harder to get up um i think the weather is also going to change it's going to not be quite so warm so it's already raining a bit here in the forest but i suppose that needs to happen so put as many um spots on there as you please and um, as you like and um um, as you're working on one part, you might have to adjust another part. But this is our little toadstool um, house on top of the hill now with the trees surrounding it. And um, you can sort of put um, a bit of a foliage behind there as well. I'll show you how to do that too. Um, so for this, you could be using some of your curls that you've got, um, or maybe you don't, but a mix mix any sort of wool um, together. Um, the curls are quite nice because they're they're sort of they're more structural. And then add a bit of a different color into it maybe even um, just some bats it doesn't have to be just curls and you could just felt them sort of um, in at the back um, at the back so that they there is um, it looks like the like the forest continues rather than um, it's not not there all the way just felt it down and have some of these curls sticking up like they're sort of some um, some vegetation sticking up maybe some um, thorns or some bracken or whatever you fancy just let some of it stick up and felt the rest down in the middle and that sort of adds a little bit of um, sort of takes away the um, I don't know if you can even see that just adds a little bit of um, foliage around the back of the house there Right, so the things that I haven't um, added in there yet, which I'm still going to do, is um, I want to put a garden path and I want to um, put some quick quick shrubs with flowers in there and then I'll show you how to do the sheep as well. So I've got another maybe 10 minutes or so, no, no more, and I'm going to do that very quickly. Before I go to this, I want to tell you what the next live streams are. So next um, Friday the 1st of April at 1 o'clock this is we've changed the time this is not an April Fool's Day joke it is the 1st of April at 1 o'clock not 11 o'clock British summer time so we we are in British summer time now not in GMT in BST um, you um, can join me to um, see the April sub boxes un being unwrapped and um, if you don't know what what that is, I'll tell you in a minute what we're actually um, getting up to in April. On Tuesday, the 5th of April, we have a very um, easy um, tutorial to make a simple bunny, really, really um, quick, quick fix one. Anybody can do this. And then on, um, on Tuesday, the 12th of April, we are making the butterfly fairy out of the fairy subscription box together. And these are the, um, these are the live streams that are actually coming up. <clears throat> sorry the sub boxes that are coming up so for april we've got the standing fox the butterfly fairy and the love our planet um a surprise box so the standing fox is um i have actually got them all here i just need to reach for them let's just grab them Ugh, yuck Ugh, not yuck but um whatever noise i don't know didn't mean to say yuck um, so I show them to you in a minute and then in May we have got the little owl May is our anniversary box where we are celebrating five years of the makers box and um, and then we've got um, the uh, queen bee fairy um, a royal fairy and we have also got street party as the surprise box in June badger ladybird fairy and how does your garden grow right this is very quickly i'll show you what's happening um surprise box wise for 
um, April. That's the standing fox and there's the butterfly fairy. She's a purple emperor and um, you will be making her from the fairy subscription box. And then you've got the standing fox on a, oops, well not standing, the falling fox on a, a patch of grass. You can actually fasten him to, to that and um, he's fully poseable. And what's special about him is his pom-pom tail, which is also full of po fully poseable and uh, he's on a wire armature. So um, that's um, basically that those projects and then our um, surprise box is um, Love Our Planet because it's actually International Earth Day on the 22nd of April. Right, let's get back to the um, teacup scene. So to make a garden path, um, just use any kind of wool that you've got, brown preferably, you could use dark green. And um, what I've done is um, I've sort of done a bit of a, um, a zigzag path. So you're just felting these details onto your teacup scene as you are so no separate um, shape needs to be made for this just felt it on and then around the corner again so going down the hill by zigzagging the path and wherever that path is going let's finish it off what is that work on there So maybe it's going somewhere down there into the valley. If you're felting near the teacup, be careful because you don't want to stab into it. Um, you could also have a little bit of a collection of water um, down here at the base. Did I bring some grey? Yes, I did bring some grey. I don't know. Let's just use a little bit of grey and white. Um, sometimes a bit of blue looks more like water, but I don't think I brought any any blue. Or maybe take tease a bit out of the um, fairy mix. Let's get a bit of blue out of there. It's a great um, wool mix, that fairy mix, especially um, that comes in the Enchanted. Um, so I'm gonna put just this is the this is meant to be a little a bit of water here collecting at the base. Um, and now I'm going to decorate around this. So we've got our, our basic things happening here. A bit of water here at the bottom. You could even put a little bridge across, path going up. Now I'm going to frame the path with um, these green curls and I'm keeping them quite loosely felted. So they're sticking up in some places. So it's almost like a 3D feature that I'm adding um, into there. Um, some of the curls, if you if you cut them, you can have more of a distinct curl look. These are the green um, Leicester curls that we do. They're really great in landscapes. I absolutely love them for anything landscapey. So put that on the other side, and um, and then you can add really quickly. You can add some flowers into there. Um, that's such a a quick way to add flowers is by just taking. Hang on, let me just finish this off. So I'm keeping things quite fluffy because I want it to look more like a shrub, shrub like here, so that the path runs lower to the little shrubs um, on the outside, on the uh, surrounding it, almost like a mini, a mini low hedge if you like. And uh, you can add tiny little flowers into um, into the shrubs by just taking a wisp of of your preferred color so I'm just using a bit of pink um, you can add um, a bit of purple in there just tiny little flowers on the way they don't even need to be anything specific just add them in there cluster them a bit so that they look like they're just hanging out flowers hanging out there so now a lot of the stuff is in the detail. You can also make a little shrub by using the green curls, even adding a little bit of the brown into it. So you can fluff it up a bit, make it into a fluff ball like that. And then separately on your felting mat, you could felt it down at one end so that that is the bit that's going onto your teacup. So I'm just making... Um, a base that I can felt into it 
and then you can have these little bits of curls sticking up like a like a shrub and then you can add some more flowers into there so it could you could use some of the um dragon mix i think that's such a nice mix as well and just gently my needle there just gently stab um, some colors into it so don't don't flatten it you have to like lift it off and then turn it around and fluff it up again just add a splash of color into it um so that it looks maybe i don't know don't know what it looks like but it looks more like a shrub so it's got a, a bits of color poking out this is sort of quite um, random what you're doing here just make sure that you have um, distinct bits still sticking up so the curls are actually quite an important part you could even go a little bit brighter in the colors so some flowers are more um, open and ready than others so I've got my 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 very uh, made up shrub here and that can go can be placed into the teacup as well so there is there is actually very little um, very sort of precise stuff going on in that teacup it's all quite um, random put together quite imprecise if you are a person of precision you might not like that but I quite th I think that looks quite nice just having a, a random um, shrub there with whatever is in there poking out and then um, to make tiny little sheep you need a little bit of um, the white Cape Merino. I, I think that is the best wool um, to use because it's a short fiber and you can stack this quite quickly into a fluff fluff ball, little round fluff ball. Don't, I'm using my fine needle again, so don't use too, um, don't stack too deep. And then the um, the Portuguese Merino, which is the short fibered wool. Um, is perfect for making a little head. Just gonna separate, give it a couple of stuffs separately, and then just felt it onto the sheep. I'm literally just it. It, it is such a simple, um, imprecise shape, but trust me, once you put it on, you even see that tiny, tiny little sheep there. Once you put it onto the field, um, everybody will see it as a sheep because that's the only thing that our brain can make sense of what that could possibly be. And um, and then make a couple more if you want. So um, there you go. Got a little sheep there now lying in the grass. Um, definitely add more flowers. Um, make that shrub, um, make another shrub. I'm just gonna show you what I've done here. There's a similar um, shrub there. I've got some um, bright little flowers on a on a fir more firmly felted um, ball of green wool. I've got um, I've got a family of sheep here, two ewes and an, an, a one ewe and, a, and two lambs. There's my little stream, and I've ad actually added a bit of a, a boulder in there, so you can do that too. And um, it's not dissimilar from this, but just a few more details that aren't there yet. Um, just keep it simple and at the same time um, just let the wool do its job rather you you having to make something too precisely it it, it really the wool is just so um, perfect for these scenes that um, and I'll just show you this again so this is the one that I've made where I made a bridge from one to the other it's a lighthouse on a on a island there and the bridge I've made the bridge there's wire actually running through it and then just three very fluffy trees and I haven't glued these in so you can see that the um, the shape that goes into these cups is actually um, literally a round ball you don't have to bridge them together you can make up all kinds of different things it's um, all down to your imagination and your um, whatever pops into your head but this is um, sort of what I have been doing and I've got all my wool in the mess now, lots of bits and pieces that is all left here still. So we're getting the winners. Um, okay, so I, I, I understood the second name, um, but I might have to just find the first name written out because I can't actually um, 
I understand what Alicia said, um, but maybe she can put it in the comments. Can you put it in the comments, um, Alicia, who's today winner is, then I can actually read it. So I know it's Leslie B is one of them. And oh, I think um, Carolyn, I think she said Carolyn. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, give anybody false hopes, but I'm pretty certain she said Carolyn. So please, um, what you need to do, the winners need to email us info at the makers with um, um, just tell us that you won your £15 gift voucher on our live stream and then we will get back to you um, with a code that's exclusive to you and you can use it whenever you want. Uh, it doesn't even have to be used in one go as far as I know. I think you can use bits of it and then it rolls over um, onto... Um, so it's not like if you don't use all of it, it, it disappears. You can always add more to it, to your shopping basket. We won't object. So... Um, Yes, so it is Carolyn and Leslie B today. And then, of, of course, on Thursday, the 31st of March, it will be two completely different people. So if you are watching on Thursday, then you will, uh, congratulations to you as winners as well. And um, is there anything else that I need to tell you today? Um, so we've done the upcoming sub boxes, summer retreat, the next live stream. No, I think that's it. Um, I hope that you've had a bit of fun um, making these teacup scenes they are so much fun to make. So if you if you if you're not tempted yet, just give it a go. I'm sure you can find a um a, a teacup that you maybe want to uh, use for something else, as in a teacup um scene. Maybe you find one in your granny's cupboard that um that um, wants to house something else other than tea or coffee, and um and then just give it a go and and let's have a bit of fun. We are going to Wonderwall at the end of April, which is in Wales. So that's a two-day wool show for those of you who are in the UK and um, and maybe who are able to get to it. And we have got a second stand now because we will be running our own mini workshops, Make and Takes. And I'm working on those at the moment. And I think you'll love those. And um, so two stands at Wonderwall. One where we sell our goodies and then another one where we will be uh, letting you try our goodies. And that is um, in hall three. And then we are usually, I uh, think, in hall one. Maybe in hall two. Can't remember. Anyway, we're not in the same hall with the two stands, but that's absolutely fine. So that's um, all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still there and you haven't done so yet, give us the thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel so that you get notifications. And um, on Friday, it's an extra one uh, this week for the unboxing. So um, we don't normally do Fridays, but it's the first of the month and we're going to do the unboxing on Friday. And otherwise, I'll see you next week with um, the Simple Bunny. The Simple Bunny. Oh, no, I've got him here somewhere. Uh, I did have him here. Where are you hiding, Bunny? There, he's hiding here. Look, he likes it. He likes the schnuffle schnuffle. Yes. There. He's um, a ginormous bunny compared to a tiny, tiny little sheep. But that's the very simple bunny that we will be making together. And he is out of the Making Simple Needle Felts, uh, one of the books that I have written. Um, but I put this one up today because I thought this looks like a fairy folk scene. Anyway, that's all I've got uh, for you today. So take care, everybody. Uh, go and enjoy the sunshine if you've still got it. And otherwise, um, hide away from the rain if you must. Take care. Bye.